Blessings, beautiful souls. Here we are on Coolie Baby Express's podcast season number three, where we express without judgment, positively affirm in faith, and stand on the word of God with power, all while aligning, implementing, and applying God's truth to our everyday current lives. I pray that this episode speaks measures into and over your life. And without further ado, let's jump right on into this newest episode. Welcome, 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 beautiful souls in this work. I don't know we are not of this world. Cool to be a day. I don't know the tinga already. Y'all, here we are. Welcome to episode four. Five of Coolie Baby Express's podcast season three. Yes, we are in season number three. And I just want to big up the YouTube family, big up all of the other families on all the streaming platforms, big up to the website family, okay? Y'all make sure y'all go to www.cb17visions with a Z at the end dot com, okay? So as you guys know, we are going to start with prayer. Father God, we just thank you so much for this beautiful beautiful time we thank you for the beautiful souls that are listening in father god for all the ears that will be hearing your word lord jesus i ask that you allow your word to become active and alive active and alive active and alive in their word in their heart in their mind in the mighty name of jesus we give you glory honor praise and thanks let it be none of me and all of you Amen and amen. Y'all, as you know, here at CB17 Visions, here at the CBE Podcast, we are BRT. Y'all know what that means. We are bold, real, and transparent. Yes, we are. And so you guys already know, we're going to start with the scripture. Okay, we're going to start with the scripture first. And so we're in Philippians chapter 1, verses 6. Okay, and it reads, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ my God you know what I feel led thank you Holy Spirit to read that in the New Living Translation because I want it to be clear as day all right and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? And so y'all, the title that we're working with for this episode is called Half God versus Whole God. Half God versus whole God. Now, this is not what you may think, right? As I was doing my studying and everything, God showed me like when people hear this, they might jump into the whole demigod world and the semi-god world and all these different kind of gods and all that. We're talking about the one true living God, but we're talking about how do you see him? How do, how do you view him, Right? In your life, is he a half God? Does he perform half in your life, right? Or is he a whole God? When he does something for you, in you, around you, does he do it wholly, like like you're whole, right? Instead of half, right? So that's what we're talking about today, okay? We're talking about half God versus whole God. And again, I'm going to say it again, all right? We're talking about the one and the true living God. And my question to you today is how do you see him? How do you perceive him? Okay, I want to say something. Perspectives. Perspectives is so important. Okay, when you look at life, you know, everybody looks at life differently. Right. And how you think about something can actually you know come into fruition in your reality like in in your in your carnal world you know what i mean for example so you ever saw that picture with um someone looking at the number six 
right? And but then someone standing on the other end of that six, or where they're looking at, where they're looking from, it's a nine, right? So that just shows you that they have two different perspectives, right? They have two different perspectives, and they see it. They see they're seeing the same thing in two different ways. Now, with that being said, I know a lot of people think like, oh, well, you know, this is not no right or wrong thing. This is not no right or wrong thing. Remember, we have free will. So you are free to see God how you choose to. You are free to put him in a box if you want to. You are free to limit God, limit him on who he truly is, on his character, limit him on the things that he can really produce and help you and show you and reveal to you and expose you in your life. You can decide how you want to see God within all of that. Amen. Amen. But this is why I always say intimacy is so important. You have to have an intimate relationship with God, y'all. Because if you don't have an intimate relationship with God, you're not going to see God for who he truly is. You're just going to look at God how the world looks at God. And and and, and it's just going to be like some of you. And it, it'll be different. Again, the six and the nine. It'll look different for a lot of you. Some of you are just going to be like, oh, God is just a bigger source um, that... You know, I, I've heard different things. A lot of people say God is a narcissist. A lot of people say God hates people. A lot of people say God, um, they just say like so many crazy things I've heard. And it's all because of their perspective of how they see God. And those things that they say, oh, God hates people because he, he allows this. That just lets me know that they don't truly know God, right? Again, we ain't talking about right or wrong or none of that. If somebody says, oh, God is God is a narcissist. I've heard these things, y'all. I can't lie to you. I cannot make these things up. I've heard where people will call God a narcissist because he just created all these people just so he can control them, just so, you know, like... <laughs> And the only way someone would think and say something like that about God, the one and true living God, they, they obviously know that God is God. They obviously know that God is God, but they don't know his character. They don't know who he truly are. And that's because they don't have an intimate relationship with God. Intimacy is important because God reveals himself to you, y'all. God, I experienced this for myself. There was one point in time where I saw God in a way that he truly wasn't. It's only when I surrendered my entire, I had to even surrender things that the church taught me growing up, y'all. This thing is deep, okay? This thing is deep. I had to unlearn a lot of things that even the church taught me because that's not who God really was. That's not who God really is, right? So I had to, I had to uh, remove myself and tear away. When you, when you have to say like, you say like you use the most, the most, um, the most quality glue ever, right? To glue two things together because you needed, you needed these things to stay. Like you needed them to stay. Right. And you needed the most quality glue ever. So say you did that and it was glued for decades and and just a long time. It, it, that glue really served its, its, its justice. It did its thing. Right. And then you realize that those two things weren't serving each other anymore. So you had to separate them. Right. This is just this is what Holy Spirit given to me. Y'all this come from the top of my head. OK, this is what Holy Spirit is given to me. So take it. All right. It, it, it stopped. It stopped serving each other. So it had to be removed. It ain't going to be the easiest thing to just all right, remove, especially because that's some quality glue. That glue was wire and designed to keep that thing together for a long time, if not forever. Right. So can you imagine 
tearing away these two things that been glued to each other for decades for 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 a long time so when i the holy spirit allowed me to say all that to say when i had to tear away from religion it wasn't the easiest overnight thing to do to, to to happen right so a lot of people say a lot of things about God that puts him down a lot of things about God that shows the opposite of who he truly is right oh God is hate no but God is really love God is love right he's the embodiment of love he sent his only begotten son to die to die for people who don't even love him can you imagine giving up your child your lover your friend your parents can you imagine giving up someone you truly love to die for somebody who you know don't like you for somebody who you know despising you and talking about you behind your back and plotting on your death now we wouldn't do that we couldn't do that as humans in this carnal body, natural mind, we couldn't and we wouldn't, y'all. We wouldn't. We wouldn't. God is love. So when people talk about God in this way, it's it's only like, it's, it's because they don't know him. They don't know his character. They don't know how he moves. They don't know his thoughts. And guess what? The Bible says, that God's ways are higher than our own. God's thoughts are higher than our own. Some of us do get a whiff of God's thoughts. Some of us, you know why? Because he reveals it to us. Because he reveals it to us. And God, the Bible says, God only reveals himself to those he chooses to. So if God has revealed himself to you, that would let me know that you got some type of intimacy, intimate relationship with him. You're, you know, s something happening between the two of y'all. You know what I mean? So uh, intimacy is extremely, extremely important. Without intimacy, you're not going to be able to know who God truly is. Right. And so this leads me. To, so when, when you get to know who, who God truly is, how are you going to see the cup? Are you going to see the cup half empty or are you going to see the cup half full? Because however you see that cup in life, that's what you're calling God. That's what you're labeling God. If you see your cup of life half empty, then that's how you're viewing God. And you're viewing God as a halfway God and you're viewing God as a half kind of God. And you're viewing God as a God that can do abundantly more than we can think or imagine. But if you're looking at your cup of life, no matter, despite what y'all go through, despite what you're seeing around you, despite what you're encountering, if you can't look at your cup of life and say, oh no, my cup half full, honey, my cup halfway full, then that implicates how you see God, that you see God as a whole God, because you know God will come through for you where he actually finishes the work that he started in you. My God. So that brings us back. That brings us back to the scripture. When God does a work in you, y'all, he's faithful. He's faithful. He's not, he's not like us. We're like that. We start something and when it gets overwhelming, we like, ah. Uh, uh. And let me tell you something. I'm pretty sure we get overwhelming to God. I'm pretty sure. And, and not in the sense that, because we probably don't overwhelm God because God is God. So he probably just be looking at us like... Listen, I'm going to let you sit there in your, in your mess real quick because you acting crazy. So I'm going to let you sit there in your mess real quick for two weeks. And then, I'll, and, and then I'll check back in with you, see if you get any sense from then. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure we don't overwhelm God, but we, we get overwhelmed. If something is too much for us, if we feel bombarded, if we feel overwhelmed, we be quick to throw something away, like a hot piece of cake. We be, we be quick to be like, okay, no, that's not for me. Done. I'm done with it. X, Y, and Z. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if God was like that with us? Because look at the things we do. We sin every day. We sin daily. We sin daily. We fall short of the glory daily. You understand? 
So can you imagine if God was like, oh yeah, no. <laughs> oh yeah, no. <laughs> and he just moved according to that. What's up everybody? It's your boy Tiki Hawkins from the OMG List Show. Y'all listen, I got a quick question for y'all. Have y'all ever experienced trauma? from the past or you have present trauma and you need guidance, you need wisdom like right now to change the course of your future. Yo, listen, all you have to do is click that link below www.cb17visions.com. Again, www.cb17visions.com. Listen, the word of the Lord says to cast all of your cares upon the Lord. Uh, the things that we care about, we have the resources for it. Uh, resources for your health, relationships, your financial situations, uh, even your, your ideas, your goals. Click that link below if you're ready to be successful and, and see answered prayers. Click that link below, www.cb17visions.com. I'm your boy, I'm your nephew, I'm your cousin, I'm your brother. And this commercial is brought to you by Expand and Resilience. Let's go. No, but he doesn't, but he doesn't. He is faithful. He is faithful when God does a work in you, when he starts something, he is faithful and he is just to complete and to finish exactly what he started. He not like us. He's not going to start something and don't finish it. And that's why even in my life, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm striving to become a person who, when I start something, even when it gets hard, I want to finish it. I want to complete it. Because that's a true warrior. That's a true warrior. That's a true faithful servant. That's a true faithful man or woman of God. When you start something, you see it through. See it through. The race, the Bible says the race is not given to the swift. This race is not given to who's fastest. That's what these races are in the world. When you go to a race, they trying to see who fast. And they trying to see who going to get to the finish line first, right? But guess what? This ain't that kind of party. This not that kind of race. This race is not given to the swift. It's given to the ones who can endure until the end. So even if you the 17th person back this off. Okay, even if you the 17th person in the back of the lane, everybody there front on you are back. If you make that finish line on the 17th, as, as the 17th person, you endured, honey. You won. <laughs> you won. If you made to that finish line as the 20th person, if you made it to that finish line as the 100th person, as long as you make it to the finish line and you endured the race, you one, you understand? God will start a work in you, beloved, and he is faithful and just to finish exactly what he started in you. So don't get discouraged. You know, a lot of you are listening now. You know God started a work in you. You know you had the passion and the hunger and the zeal and the urge to do that thing. Start that business. Speak that word. Talk to that person. X, Y, and Z. You know you, you felt the fire within you to do it. But then the enemy always going to come try to pervert the plans of God. And so the enemy always going to come try to make you feel overwhelmed. The, let me tell you what the enemy would do. And I was sharing this with a friend of mine. The enemy will try to throw more stuff that look godly, right, on top of the task that God gave you. He would try to throw stuff in your face that looks godly. Oh, this is a task you need to do for God. Oh, this is a task. He would try to throw new, more stuff on your plate. And then you're like, oh, because it's godly, I got to do it. And then you become overwhelmed. Some things y'all doing you ain't was called to do uh-oh uh-oh some things that many of us are doing we weren't called to do by God we just try to take it up because somebody painted the word God on it somebody painted Jesus's name on it so because we felt we feel like oh okay well look at Jesus name I gotta serve God listen not every Thing, not every opportunity you're supposed to take and that's how the enemy is so conniving and crafty and he will do that he will use that against you and he will try to allow you to get off my god to run off 
off of the track. He will get you to run off the path and out of the race. My God. So your attention span can be miserable and all over the place. And then you over here overwhelmed. You over here. God said, don't get weary and well doing. What you are doing for Christ, God's going to fuel you. He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the, 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 the encouragement. He's going to give you the courage and the boldness and the endurance to finish. Because we are made as his image. We're his children. We're supposed to be a replicas of our daddy. So guess what? If he's faithful and just to, to finish what, we start, what he started, it we need to have that same posture we need to have that same characteristic you understand we need to finish exactly what we started when it is shown to us to start that thing my god y'all this a this a short episode but it's it's a powerful one and i want you guys to really take this to, to christ really take this to christ remember the scripture philippians 1 6 god is literally faithful my god he began a good work in you he began not just a work y'all a good one a good one a good one we know scripture says that anything good comes from god right he gave he started and began a good work in you so you gotta know you have to know what's in your heart that if he started a good work in you he's gonna finish that good work in you you just gotta endure you just gotta continue on and run that race pace yourself you don't gotta be you don't gotta be the fastest person on the track and be, yo, in our real life, when I really learned this on my spiritual journey with God, when on this walk with Christ, I, when I really learned that, I said, who, Lord, so you telling me I don't got to be swift? You telling me I don't got to be trying to keep up with Tom, Dick, and Harry? You, you telling me I don't have to be fast and all of that? You telling me I don't got to be the first one to hit finish line is that what you're telling me lord because if that's what you're telling me honey i'm gonna take it slow because i done seen what life can do when you're trying to run you're trying to go swift and you're trying to go fast you're trying to go beyond your time you try i see I, oh i experienced that so when god showed me and taught me you don't gotta be fast baby girl just endure go at your pace and endure and don't stop and finish you don't got to be fast. Yo, from me learn that me take my time. Anything me do, me take my time. You understand? Nah. You don't got to, you don't have to be the fastest. Just be diligent. Just be consistent. Just be persistent. Even if you like Yo, honestly in our real life, some days you're going to be running fast. You're going to be feeling good. You know, you're going to be in it. You're going to be there. You're going to, uh, uh, uh. You might be number one. Yeah, uh, uh. And then some days, you're going to be jogging. You're going to be jogging. <sighs> Pace that breath. Just jog. <sighs> you might be number seven, but that's okay. Just jog. Some days, y'all, you're going to be doing like a snail. You understand? <laughs> y'all, I'm telling you, some days, you are going to be like a like moving like a snail like a slug and that is okay you know why that's okay because you're moving you know that's why that's okay because you're still persistent in moving even if you're not moving as fast as you was yesterday even if you're not jogging like you was last week you're still moving and that's why it is okay and that's why god wants you to just keep keep your pace and just keep moving and keep enduring and keep going because as long as you keep going you're gonna make it to the finish line and it don't matter if you get there first it don't matter if you get there 17th it don't matter if you get there a hundred as long as you reach that so and you endure and that's who the race is given to that's it all them people <laughs> with, in, with the intention oh I gotta be first I gotta be first race ain't given to you boo race ain't given to you it's time to reevaluate. 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 How do you view God, y'all? Do you view him as a half God or a whole God? One thing me know. 
one thing me no. God is a God of whole, okay? When he comes to heal you, he don't come to heal you halfway. When he come to deliver you, he don't come to deliver you halfway and say, oh, okay, I'm gonna deliver, I'm gonna deliver you this halfway. Uh, one feet, one of your feet gonna be out the door, the other one gonna still be in the wilderness. So, no, 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 no. That is not the God we serve, honey. That is not the God we serve. He comes to deliver you all the way out. Okay, he comes to heal you completely. You shall be whole. When you leave from wherever, when you walk out of whatever, when you get up from whatever, you shall be whole. He is a God of more, more than, more than. He causes more than. We just not, we're not just conquerors. We're more than, okay? He came to give us a more, more than a, an abundant life, okay? He didn't just come to give us an abundant life. He said a, a, a life all the more abundant, more than abundance. Come on, y'all. Come on. God is a whole God. A whole God. And I know some of you may have been seeing God. Your perspective may have been in a place where you were seeing God as a half God subconsciously, not intentionally, but because of how you were deciding to, to see things, because of how you were deciding to shift your perspective and look at your life. You were seeing God as a half God, not not maybe you weren't like, oh, yeah, God is a half God. But the way your perspective was, that's what you were telling God. So that's why I want to that's why I say evaluate, because many of us see things in a way and we're the way we see certain things. It, it is us agreeing with things that we wouldn't probably intentionally say and agree right but the way we move that's us agreeing with that thing you know what i mean we got to evaluate how do i see god if i do see god as a whole god if i'm speaking it and and saying you know what god is a, a god of more he is a whole kind of god you know i'm gonna start looking at life differently i'm gonna start looking at my circumstances differently i'm gonna shift my perspective so when i see things around me i know god is whole so i know this thing ain't come to take me out i know this thing did not come to destroy me i know this thing is not you know what i'm saying like when we shift our perspective go in Go within and see how am I really viewing Abba? How am I really viewing God? How do I really view my life? How do I really view my circumstances and my struggles? Because we all got them, right? Then you see. Then you see. You see. You really see how you view God. But one thing more I make you know is God is a whole God. <laughs> he ain't no half God. He don't do nothing halfway. Mm-mm. Is either he going to do it or he not going to do it? He not going to do it. Nope. He's going to do it either completely or him not do it. Right? And so as we see scripture here says that he began a good work in us. And if he already began it, guess what? He's going to finish it. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And I just want to thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you right now for this beautiful episode that you had to remind us. Remind us that we got to get in with you to know your character. It's not enough to just hear what other people say about you. We got to actually come to you in intimacy. We got to come to you and hear from you, see you, allow, allow us to sit in your presence for you to reveal to us who you truly are. And it is only then we get to know who you are and how big you are and how whole you you truly are. So Father God, we thank you for this word and we ask that you continue to reveal and expose the things that you need to your children as we go down, as we as we seek you out in diligence, Lord God. We just thank you. Have your way. Have your way. Let this word be alive and active and permeate the hearts of your children. We love you so much. We give you all the glory, honor, praise, and thanks. You are a whole God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It is so and so shall it be y'all this was amazing and again i just pray that you take what you need from it take whatever you need to back to god to test the spirit y'all know i'm always tell y'all that all right test the spirit because this holy spirit up in here i'm telling you right now right so make sure you guys go to the website we got the grand risings early in the rising from monday to friday we got the power prayer we got the one-on-one -on -one healing sessions okay we got the live bible study on saturdays i hope y'all are not missing that every saturday at 9 a.m east 
Eastern Standard Time. Okay, there's so much more there on the website. Y'all go to www.cb17visions with a Z at the end dot com. Y'all, this was amazing. And I just pray that you start to evaluate and see how do I really see God? Look at your life. Look at your life. However you see your circumstances, that replicates how you see God. All right. And if that needs to be changed, go ahead and change it. And, and if you good, that's good. Keep seeing Christ the way that he is and keep getting into his presence. We can never get enough of God. We can never, ever, ever get enough of God. So I love you guys so much. I love you so much. Remember, go to the website and I will see you on the next episode. Thank you guys so much for joining me here on episode five at the CBE podcast season number three. Okay. Remember, if you guys want to be a guest on the episode, you are so free to do so actually we want you we want to hear your um, testimony we want to hear what God speaks to and through you please come on and go to the website sign up and let's get to work okay I love you guys so much big up and bless up yourself and I will see you on the next episode cool to be every day you're done with the tank already We give infinite thanks for tuning into the CBE podcast. We pray that this episode was very insightful and had many takeaways for you to apply. Take this back to God and allow him to give you further revelation on what's specifically for you. For Coolie Baby music, merch, and more, please go to our website at www.cb17visions.com. That's cb17visions.com. This episode was brought to you by Expand in Resilience and CB17 Visions. Until next time, be blessed, and we'll see you on the next episode.